Hey guys, Dan here with Battlefield Curator. Uh, are all Bubba rifles bad? When you think of that Bubba rifle, you think of that backyard hillbilly that just butchered a rifle, a military, perfectly good military rifle. He took it and he just, he just cut up the metal, he cut up the stock, he tried to make it look pretty, and it isn't even efficient. And it's something that is just a Frankenstein monster. Us military surplus collectors uh, just despise seeing a sporterized uh, military rifle that is pretty much beyond repair or uh, very hard to bring back to original military configuration. Why is that? Well, we have to look at the history of sporterized rifles. So, if we go back when we had military rifles available on the market for civilian purposes, uh, you're going to looking at like the Tabatier and some of these black powder cartridge type rifles that were converted. You're going to notice that some of these were sporterized as well. So once a military rifle was deemed uh, outdated, uh, it got sent to the civilian surplus market, sold off. Now civilians at this time, they needed these rifles to hunt with. That's right, it was a survival need to have a rifle to provide food for the family. So, historically, there was a lot of need for hunting. And that is why you have a lot of sporterized military rifles out there, or what we like to call Bubba rifles. Now, one thing about these sporterized rifles is that they're probably enhanced for uh, their weight. So they're, they're probably, there's a weight reduction involved, which means the stock has been cut. And also they've probably been accurized just a little bit. Either they added a scope or they might have glass bedded the stock or done some modifications to the barrel or maybe even changed the caliber. One thing about these bubble rifles is that they're pretty accurate and they're lightweight, and they're efficient for hunting purposes. So going back to the times where people needed these rifles to hunt with, they were a little bit more expensive than if you were just to get them in the military configuration. People back then weren't really thinking about collecting these. There were a few, right? Uh, but you did have more of the civilian populace looking at these as a hunting platform. So when it comes down to it, the cost was higher back then, and nowadays you can find them for a lot cheaper than an actual collectible military rifle. And if you are feeling frothy, you could probably grab one for cheap and restore it to its original military configuration. It won't ever be exactly the same, but it'll be close. I talked about the rifle being used for hunting purposes. Um, nowadays, we live in a society where we could just go to the grocery store and buy meat. Back then, a lot of families used these rifles to hunt with. And the more accurate and the lighter, the more efficient it was, the better it, the more likeliness of it being able to produce a game animal uh, immediately. So last deer season, my son wanted to go hunting. And I said, hey, I've got a collection of military surplus rifles. Go ahead and pick one that you would want to use. And of course, he picked a sporterized Lee Enfield number no. four Mark I. And man, I just, I, I tried to get him out of it. it. I mean, but it had a scope. It looked like a hunting rifle. It, he felt like he could use it efficiently. And it was actually a really accurate rifle. I've, I've tested it and zeroed it. And it shot really, really well. Um, so he picked that, and I, I kind of tried to sway him away from it, but he wanted it. So we went out hunting, and this huge eight-point buck comes out. And this is within the first 15 minutes of just sitting there, and I'm surprised. Of course, he's uh, nine years old, so he's a little sidetracked, and he doesn't even see the buck. It's perfectly broadside, about 80 to 100 yards away. And I tried quietly as I could to get his attention. I, I got his attention, and uh, I told him, to, I, I kind of gave him a sign to look. 
and he looked and then he put his head back down and and I got his attention again because he just didn't really see it he kind of just overlooked it I guess so I got his attention again and then he saw it and then his just eyes lit up like oh and then he gets behind the rifle he aims it by this time the buck had turned its back to us and I thought oh man I'm gonna record this and oh wait he's probably gonna shoot it in the butt he's gonna ruin the meat oh man I'm thinking of all the worst case scenarios no this kid puts a perfectly aimed shot right on the rib cage uh, and it went up to the sternum and the heart uh, the buck dropped its hind first and then dropped its front and it was a uh, very ethical kill and he, he waited for it to kind of turn a little bit to the side so that he can aim his shot and you know I, I would have been hesitant to take that shot but man he really really practiced his fundamentals maybe I'll let you uh, get his reaction right here here's a video of his reaction I actually got a deer. Let's go. I do think that there are instances where sporterized rifles should be restored, uh, but there are those that are just great, a great platform as they are, as they've been sporterized. You got to think that some of these sporterized rifles that have been um, really artistically accurized and and some of the designs on the stocks that's history that's american history you know that's a time where america americans settlers uh, you know hunters uh, farmers they needed these rifles and they needed them for survival so i think that sporterized rifles are history within themselves and not all sporterized military rifles are bad. So, and especially in this instance, with uh, the Lee Enfield my son used, I was planning on restoring it, and uh, now I think I'm just gonna leave it as is, because it's his rifle. I mean, he used it to get his buck. Uh, he put, he helped provide food for our family. So let me know your thoughts. Are all military sporterized rifles bad? Well, that's it for the video, guys. Be sure to pulverize that like button and subscribe for the algorithms. It really helps out with the channel. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And as always, be sure to learn history and curate history. Make it a great day.